Well, good evening, church family. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to join us for this midweek uh, time to get together. You know, I thought it was so important that um, during this time where we're all sort of isolated, that uh, we try to connect with you on a little more of a regular basis. And, and some of you perhaps are joining us for the very first time on a Wednesday night. And I say a special welcome to you. And uh, what I'd like to do tonight is just share some words of encouragement with you. Um, we have all of the pastoral staff here, and uh, we're, we've been real socially distant, and uh, we maybe are not the quite six-foot margin, but we're pretty close to it, and uh, we do have some distance between us, but we want to share just some thoughts with you because we love you and we want to stay connected with you, and really what I'd like to do is just let each one of our pastoral staff members uh, just share a word of encouragement. You know, the Bible says all things work together for good, and in the midst of this a terrible thing that's happening in our nation and it's impacted all of us in some way. Uh, I think it's good for us just to reflect on some good things that God is doing and maybe a good word from His Word that would be a blessing to you. So i tell you what I'd like to do. Uh, I'm going to ask Pastor John to share first. And uh, he is our pastor to families, uh, among other things, families and missions. But uh, I just wanted him to share a word with you. And then uh, following that, we'll just take turns and let uh, the other guys share to their areas of ministry. And so, Pastor John, uh, share a word with us, please. Thanks, Brother Gary. I know the church family was hoping that I would finish preaching through Acts while we were <laughs> off the uh, live air. But uh, I want to take you to De Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 11 and specifically I'm going to be in verse 13 through 23 so Deuteronomy 11 13 through 23 and this is specifically uh, after God gave the second set of tablets to, to Moses and it says and it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments which I command you today to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul then I will give you the rain for your land in its season the early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain your new wine and your oil and i will send grass in your fields for your livestock that you may eat and be filled take heed to yourself lest ye your heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them lest the lord's anger be aroused against you and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain and the land yield no produce and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord has given you. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of the heavens before the earth. For if you carefully keep all these commands, which I command to you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to them, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you, and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourself. Church family is your family pastor. I wanted to share a word from you, and I could probably preach five sermons out of that passage. And I know you're thinking that John's going to point out, hey, this is uh, God's provision. We're in a time of where we're concerned about, does God care and does God provide? And I will tell you, yeah, there's an awesome sermon here on God's provision. And specifically, God's provision is based on obeying His commands, and God's provision is based on loving the Lord, your God, and serving Him. But what Brother Gary asked me to do was to highlight something that I've seen positive come out of this. So, out of this, this COVID isolation. And, and, and really, I want to point you down more so to verse number 19. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise up. You know, often in our life, and especially as families, we become very, very busy in life. Uh, I certainly, uh, with Benjamin and Hannah Jean, Benjamin's been playing ball four days a week, double headers. We don't get a lot of time to sit and talk. And what I found the blessing of this COVID is, 
we once again have had time to sit and eat dinner together. And we've had time to sit down and do Bible study. And even as your family pastor, I struggle with the priorities and timing of life. Yes, I get my Bible study in early in the morning, but it's very hard to get my family in one place at one time. And what I want to encourage you is, is God gave us very, very explicit instructions to teach our children when we get up, when we lay down, as we're going and coming. And I think when you, when you look at the blessing that's come out of this, that we actually have more time to engage our family and to reprioritize and evaluate what's most important. I just want to encourage you from Deuteronomy 11 is, is to relook that time and use this time to teach your kids. And maybe you're older, maybe you don't have children, but to sit down together in meaningful worship and Bible study to continue to grow in the Lord because as He promised in that same passage, He's going to provide for us. If we love Him, we serve Him, and we obey Him. Amen. So let's teach that to our families, and I hope that's an encouragement to our families. Amen. Brother? All right. Jacob, uh, he's our student pastor, associate pastor, administrator, and minister of everything else. And so I did ask him if he would just to uh, share a word with our students. You know, I reached out to um, our students earlier in the week and just said, you know, what, what are some things that you guys are thinking in the midst of in the midst of all this, in the midst of all this craziness, because you know sometimes children and, and students they don't, they don't really understand everything and why are we out of school and. And, you know, first, first thing I want to say is I know uh, seniors, I know this is a tough time. Uh, my senior year was 2011, and uh, we, had, we had a tornado come through. We had um, a snowpocalypse come through uh, all in the same year, that same year. Uh, and we, I think I missed maybe a whole month of school my senior year. But, but I'm here to tell you I still graduated. Everything's still okay. Um, and, and I know it's an anxious time. I know some of you play sports. Um, but, but what, I'm about to, what I'm about to give a word to, to all of you uh, would be helpful, but, but just know seniors, I'm praying for you. I know this is a tough time. This is supposed to be a joyful time. You're getting ready to graduate, and, and I know it's stressful instead of joyful for you right now, but know that I'm praying for you uh, as your student pastor. And so as, as I reached out, um, and I, I got the question, how do we reduce anxiety and, and worry and stress in this time? I got a question from one of our seniors. And, and, and here's what I got. This is, this is a life verse for me. Um, if any of you know me, I know y'all can shake your heads. I'm a worry boy. Uh, I'm a worrier. I worry all the time. And God, God hammers this verse to me. And, and I got to see this in a new light as, as he brought this to me just to share with you. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, he says, uh, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness, uh, or some versions say gentleness, be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Let me just briefly say, he gives us, students, he gives us seven commands. And you know, it, it, this goes for everybody. This goes for everybody. Uh, what you just said about families, we can all take that. And, and he gives us seven commands. In the first two commands, he says, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. That's the same command twice. Rejoice. Be joyful. And, and he's not talking about being happy all the time. He's talking about being joyful and rejoicing in the midst of the storm, in the midst of what's going on. He's not talking about the absence of pain and suffering and sorrow. He's talking about uh, just having pure joy, knowing that Jesus is there. He, he ends it with the God of peace will be with you, knowing that the God of peace is with you. So the first two commands are rejoice always. He repeats it, rejoice always. And then he says, uh, and I think we can take this. He says in verse 5, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Because the Lord is at hand. And I think we can take this in this time. Uh, there's a lot of arguing going on in our world uh, about who's right and who's wrong and who's handling the virus the best and who's smart enough. And, and there's a lot of arguing and things going on. But be nice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone around you. So, so love your neighbors. That's what he's telling us. And then the fourth command is the hardest one, what you asked about. 
Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. That's a tough command. But he tells us how to not be anxious. I wrestled with this verse for so long. It says don't be anxious, but man, that's, that's easy to say and hard to do. How do I not be anxious? He says in the fifth command, but pray. But in everything, with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We don't, we don't let our requests be made known to God because He needs to know what we want. He knows what we want. We let our requests be made known to God so that we let the worries come off of us. So that's how we're not anxious. We pray. That's the fifth one. And then the sixth one. Uh, I love what he says here in verse 8 of Philippians chapter 4. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, any excellence... Think about these things. You want to you wipe away the worry and the anxiousness? Think about good things, true things, honorable things, pure things, lovely things, things worthy of praise. And, think, and the, the thing I can think of the most that's worthy of our praise is Jesus Christ because of what He did for us and that He's with us in the storm. So think about these things. That's the sixth command. And the final and seventh command, He says, And what you have learned and received and heard, practice these things so he says rejoice rejoice be gentle don't be anxious pray think about these things and practice these things and then he finally says and if you'll do that the god of peace will be with you you'll have peace that's how you you reduce the anxiety and the worry in this tough time know that i'm praying for you and i love you guys well we've heard from the left <laughs> so now let's hear from the right <laughs> and uh adam if you would share a word with us. Adam is our discipleship uh, pastor, and I just asked him to speak a word to our Sunday school classes, our small groups, and we all miss meeting together and being together. But uh, Adam, if you would, just share a word with us, please. I appreciate that, Brother Gary. <clears throat> I just want to send out a word of encouragement tonight, like, it's, like he said to our Sunday school classes. I want you to continue to do what I know you're already doing. And that's checking up on everybody, making sure that the needs remain known. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed since I've been here, this body has been incredible at ensuring that the needs are known and are taken care of. Whenever we have prayer requests, you know, it's, it never fails that even, they may not be going to this church, but somebody's mentioned in the community that somebody knows and everybody's aware of. And, and it's just, so important that we continue to pray not only for our congregation but for the ones that are out there uh, that have lost their jobs you know through this situation um, the people that you know need hope the hope that we have and can share with them so that's one of the things that y'all do well you truly embody what jesus meant when he said to love one another you all do that in a mighty way and i just want to encourage you tonight in that now, Sunday school teachers, make sure that you're making calls or texts to check on people as often as you can because those are the ones you minister to. Those are the ones that God's given you responsibility for. Some of us are getting some serious cabin fever. <laughs> I know that because I've seen posts on Facebook that are, kind of, that they're, they're really kind of odd. Uh, I've seen Brother Jacob in his moonshine outfit. And dude, I cannot unsee that. Okay? All right? I can't unsee it. Tommy Johnson said, right, I could not unsee that. All right? But we need to keep, keep in touch with everybody. I've, I'm trying to keep in touch with everybody in my class to see if there's any needs. Anything that you, you know, I never thought toilet paper would be such a precious commodity. Okay? But I've, got, I've seen people in panic mode. You know, with toilet paper, just out the, uh, their buggies were just stacked with everything. Uh, toilet paper, paper plates, whatever. But the thing about it is, though, that's panic. And to, to speak to what Brother Jacob said earlier, that's worry. See, the trial that we're currently going through as a nation and globally is something that's unprecedented. But the thing about it is it wasn't a surprise to God. It's not a surprise to God. But like Brother John said, I believe it's forced us to kind of slow down. We've all been super busy. But now we're forced to slow down and reflect on what's truly important in this life. And that's our relationships. Our relationship with each other, but also with Christ. 
This is an opportunity to reflect and connect even in a time of what they call social distancing, which I never thought was a thing. <laughs> it's an opportunity to reflect on what God is doing. See, God's not out of the picture here. God's got it all under control. People have questions. I get texts all the time. What's going on? What's going on? And like I said, people are in panic mode. This is an opportunity to be still and know that he's God. To remember that he's in control. It's an opportunity to show others around us that our faith is unshakable. Even in these turbulent times. So connect with your neighbors. Call them, check on them, take care of any need that they may have. Invite them to join us online for worship. Show them that there's no need for fear. If you look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Now, when I turn on the news, that's the last thing I see is sound mind. It's people in panic mode everywhere. People arguing left and right. What's the best route to take? But who's in control? We cannot forget who's in control. One of the greatest things that this situation has given me is a great understanding, a greater understanding of the need for the close relationships that we all just long for. The need for fellowship. They say that you don't know what you've got until it's gone. Well, I think it's far too long, maybe we've taken it for granted, that we could gather together in small groups and as a congregation whenever and wherever we wanted to. But right now we're getting a little taste of that missing essential element of being a part of the body of Christ. The fellowship that we have with one another. Now churches all over the globe are finding new ways to maintain that fellowship. It's essential to the health of the body. So what I want you to do and I encourage you to do is join us online whenever we put something up. This Sunday, next Wednesday, we're going to have something. Facebook, Facebook yeah. all that social media. Mm -hmm. That's our option right now. And that's the church's option. But does that make us any less of a church? It doesn't. We're still the body of Christ. It's just different. And now some of us don't like different, but it is different. So what do we continue to do? We continue to pray for one another. Like I said, take care of those needs that are in your class, that are mentioned, those in the community around us. That's a good opportunity to share the gospel. When people have questions at the grocery store, when you go out and you get to talk about those things that are affecting all of us, that's a good opportunity to share the gospel. And let us know how we can help. How can we get involved? Share with us. And if you're watching tonight and you're not currently active or involved in a Sunday school class, when we all get back to normal, what we consider normal, I urge you to get involved in a class. Get connected. In times like this, those relationships that you build with those in your class can make all the difference in the world to you and your family. That's right. That's right. Very I appreciate good. it. Yeah. Good work. And... Uh, Brother Rex, among other uh, ministerial hats that he wears, is also our pastor to our senior adults. And I just ask uh, Pastor Rex if he would to share a word with us. Well, I'm, uh, I'm so thankful for our senior adults. You know, I think that's one area in the church we have, uh, we have failed is we haven't used our senior adults more to teach our younger people. You know, they have so much wisdom and... Uh, and in just the past couple of days, just calling and checking on some of them, they're so encouraging. They, you know, I have everything I need. You know, I don't need anything. Uh, but thank you so much for calling. And there were a couple of them that I uh, couldn't get off the phone with, but, uh, but, uh, but I enjoyed talking with them. And I just want to share this with them and with everyone else. And like Jacob said, I'm a, I'm a worrier also. But if you think about in Matthew 6, um, uh, you know, Matthew 6, he talks about, uh, therefore, do not worry about your life, in verse 25. Um, and then on down in verse 27, it says, uh, who of you by worrying can add a single hour 
to his life. And why do you worry about clothes? And it just talks about, it keeps telling us, so do not worry. Worry. Uh, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Uh, there's so many things uh, in this verse, in these, in these verses that uh, just encourage me. It tells me in these verses that I'm worth something to God. If He cares so much about the birds of the field, uh, He cares a whole lot more for me. And, um, and the waste of worry cannot add anything to our lives. So I just encourage you not to worry, as most of you are not doing, the ones I've talked to, you're not worrying about uh, things that sometimes we normally do. So I just, I'm, that's been an encouragement to me in talking to our seniors. And also talking to our, our worship team, uh, I have really missed coming together for corporate worship. I enjoy being with our church family. I enjoy being with our praise team. I enjoy being with our choir. It's just a great time to worship um, every Sunday. But you know, it, we, we don't just worship on Sunday mornings at 1030. <coughs> we can worship anytime. Uh, and really our whole lives should be lived in an attitude of worship whether we're driving our cars, whether we're at home with our families or whatever. And so I just want to share one verse with you tonight about worship. Psalms 34, 1 says, I will extol or I will bless the Lord at many times. His praise will always be on my lips. So church family, I just encourage you during this time when all these things are going on is that you live in an attitude of worship. And every day you have something that you focus on about worship in your life. If you need... Um, uh, some ideas about worship, some scriptures, some things about worship, you can feel free to email me or text me or call me, and I'll be glad to help you with those. You know, uh, we had asked uh, some of you to share some good things that have been going on in your life, um, and also any prayer concerns that you have. And some of you did, and we thank you for that, those that communicated with us. Uh, there was a couple in particular that shared with us, and you know what, we may just share those at another time, but I just want to say thank you to Kristen and Lacey for the good word that you sent in. Uh, that was real positive and encouraging to me. And really what you did, and I'll just share with the church, is in both of their communication, they captured some of the things that we've been talking about. Family time, time. Uh, getting in the Word, spending time worshiping the Lord. Uh, you know, it's, the thing that's been interesting to me is how God sort of directed my heart since the beginning of the year in sharing the Word of God with our congregation. Um, you know, I spent the first couple of Sundays of this year talking about how important it was to recognize that time is a gift from God, that we are to be good stewards of the time that God has given to us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We talked about teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. And here we are right now more than ever appreciating time that God has given to us. And, and, and I don't know about y'all, but just like Kristen said and Lacey shared, uh, I've been so busy uh, that this has actually been a refreshment to just pause a little bit and spend some time with other things that are really more important in my world and in my life. And then I spent the next several weeks leading right up until this, really this episode, talking about the church. I, I did a series on the church. Now, the Holy Spirit just impressed upon my heart to prepare our church to be good stewards of time and to understand that church is not a place, it's a people, and to exercise our gifts in the body of Christ, ministering to one another, and just how the Lord brought all that together to equip us and prepare us for this moment in time. And so, church, thank you for being students of the Word. Thank you for being disciples of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving our church and being faithful to our church. We just wanted to give you this word of encouragement today. I'm going to close with, uh, with just a, a, a very, really a very short verse, but I want to make one comment on it. It's found in Psalm 56 in verse 3. And the psalmist made this observation. He said, When I am afraid, I will 
trust in thee. He didn't say if, because there's times in all of our lives that fear creeps in. And I recognize that during these days of uncertainty and with all the mixed signals that we're getting and the messages, and even, and on top of that, being not only concerned about um, our own health, but really concerned about the health of those that we love. And it's easy to slip into fear. And uh, I just wanna encourage you to do like the psalmist when he said, when I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Put your trust in the Lord. The only way you can trust somebody is to get to know them and to love them and to spend time with them. I meet a stranger that I've not had opportunity to really get to know in a way that I could genuinely love that person. Now, I love them in the Lord, but I'm talking about a, a, a deep, serious uh, relationship. I meet a stranger on the road. I gotta tell you, I don't trust them like I would Jacob or Pastor John or Rex or Adam. I don't trust them like I would somebody in my family, um, my wife, my daughter, my son-in-law. Uh, I don't trust them like I would people that I've spent time with. And I'm telling you, if you really want to learn how to trust the Lord, you gotta spend time with Him. And the more you spend time with Him, the more you love Him, and the more you love Him, the more you trust Him. So through this whole experience, let's learn to trust the Lord. You know, church, I really thank you for just giving us these moments of your time and, and how blessed we are to have such wonderful uh, pastors on our team. And thank you guys. Each one of those words just spoke a word of encouragement to my life. And um, I, I'm just grateful for it. And you pray for us as we try to lead you and navigate you, uh, navigate our church through this whole process. I cannot wait for us to get back together. And when that day comes, whatever day it is, um, I hope you'll plan on being here and we'll just fill this place up and we're going to have a glory hallelujah time. But in the meantime, we're going to be ministering to you through all of the online venues that we have. So uh, when you see a Facebook post that is presented by one of our staff members about something going on in our church, uh, push the like button or make a comment um, I don't understand how all Facebook works, but I've been told that there's an algorithm that the more people who like something or comment on something, the more it stays sort of on the front. And so uh, do that. It lets us know that we're communicating and we'll be sending out text messages. You'll get maybe, we try not to abuse the phone call system, but during this time we may need to call you. Uh, to give you an update on something or to make an announcement about something. So be patient with us as we're trying to communicate with you. Uh, I know there's a whole lot of things that come into our inbox and our Facebook pages and our phones and everything else, but the church is one of the most important institutions in your life, in your world, and I hope whenever we communicate with you in that way, you'll give it priority attention because we're really just trying to keep you informed in the ministries and the missions that God has called our church to be a part of. Now, speaking of that, 10.30, Sunday morning, let's do it again. Uh, this time, I think everything's going to be working well. The audio is going to be so much better, um, and uh, hopefully the video will be as well. And I have a special word that God's given me. I'm going to pick up my series on the Ten Commandments. Man, I'm telling you, the commandment that we're studying Sunday morning is so incredibly relevant to this day and time that we're living in and the issues that we're dealing with. I, you don't want to miss it. Brother Rex is going to be singing and leading us in some music and worship Sunday morning. I'll be sharing from God's Word. Invite friends to come uh, online. And uh, here we had over 200 that participated and, uh, in our service last week. I hope to double that this week. And I want to thank you also in, in closing. I do want to thank you. I know I put a sort of a funny little post on Facebook uh, yesterday, uh, but, I, I, funny at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do want to encourage you. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness and stewardship. Uh, that's not a drum that I want to keep beating, but I do need to keep it before us because that is so important. But I got to tell you something. Uh, 
Holly called me just yesterday or the day before, and she told me that in the last week, we have had people who have never given online before who have started giving online. And she shared with me that we've had people come to the church office and leave their offerings here. And she even shared with me that somebody uh, just felt led to bring their entire month, their whole month tithe in uh, yesterday or the day before. And, and I, I don't know who all is giving and who that was, but I'm just saying you are responding and understanding that God, see, it's, it's our way of understanding God is our provider. He is the one who provides for us in good times, bad times, fun times, hard times. He's the one that provides for us regardless of what's happening in the economy. He's the one that puts the food on our table and the roof over our head. And when we give our offerings, we're saying to the Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your provision. So thank you for being faithful in that area. Letting us share with you tonight. Hope you have a good remainder of the week. And we look forward to being back with you Sunday on the Lord's Day. God bless you. Thank you.